Hey Brewery Life, Jasper here. Um, so I've had a lot of people interested in just setting up a small lab and kind of the lab pieces that I have going on back here. I have a small little area, a little mobile lab that I'd be happy to show you guys today. So let's go check out the small lab setup. Cheers. So I've laid everything out here on my desk. It's a little madness. Usually everything's kind of put away and I bring it out as I need it. But I got, a, got most of all the stuff that I hope you guys would like to see out here today. Um, some things I'm still working on and expanding. Um, trying to get going with my lab um, are an incubator and a shaker and an autoclave so I can start pouring my own uh, plates and doing some streaking tests. Some ATP kind of firefly testing so I can check my uh, sanitary processes a little better. Uh, a mechanical pipe pet, a little, a little better pipe pet is uh, something that I'm also looking at, looking at getting as well. So those are a few things that maybe you want to add on to this list if you, if you have the space or uh, the budget to start out with. So I think I'm just going to start, start over on this side and go through this stuff and see what you guys think. So let's start with some solutions first. Um, here's our methylene violet, our alkaline methylene violet. This is what we use for viability stains on our yeast. Counting our yeast cells, we don't use methylene blue, we use methylene violet. It's supposed to be a little bit better, so maybe try this out, methylene violet stains. We have a little iodine here, if we want to do an iodine test on our starch conversion, our mash tun, making sure our temperature probes and stuff are right. It's good to keep a little bottle of iodine around so you can run that test. Uh, we have our pH uh, electrode storage solution. I think it's a three molar potassium chloride solution. We also have our uh, buffer solutions or our calibration solutions for the pH as well, along with the storage solution. Uh, here we have a zero oxygen solution, just so we can check our uh, dissolved oxygen meter and make sure it's reading within the zone we like. Moving on to our glass and our beaker setup. We have three 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flasks here. Um, these are nice to do some dilutions in, to rinse stuff, to collect samples. So I'd recommend having three 250 Erlenmeyers. We have two two liter Erlenmeyer flasks here. This one and this one makes feeding the yeast um, starters. Uh, make it real easy in these two liter flasks. So I have two of these and would recommend that. Here we have our uh, stand and our holder. So if we want to hold a temperature pro pH uh, DO meter, it's all on this stand here. Back here we have a 250 milliliter graduated cylinder and also a titration tube so we can measure uh, the amount of phosphoric acid we need to acidulate our sparge water, get our dosage right using our titration method. All right, out of the glassware, moving on to some other little things here. We have just chem wipes. It's important to keep some chem wipes around to wipe off your microscope if you're using immersion oil or wipe off your meters and clean your meters. Um, it's important to have some just chem wipes around. Then we have um, starting some yeast viability and yeast counting stuff. We have a clicker, a little counter, so you can count your yeast cells when you're counting. Always good to have. We have our hemocytometer and our hemocytometer cover slips. This is also used for viability testing and yeast counting. Two good things to have. We have some disposable pipette, pipettes here. I think 0.4 milliliter or 0.6 milliliter disposable pipettes. Um, makes dosing things a lot easier to have some disposable pipettes on hand. We have some sterile, some sterile pipettes, 25 milliliter and 10 milliliter, along with the pipette pumps that go with them. You stick a pipette in here, suck up, push down. So 10 and 25 milliliter pipette pumps. Um, keep moving on. Uh, we have our hydrometer. So this is our hydrometer that also has a temperature correct on it. That's how we tell our gravities with our hydrometer. Um, looking at some of our uh, test tubes here. 
Here's a fifth, this is a pack of 15 milliliter centrifuge test tubes for using, uh, for doing our dilutions for our yeast counting. We use a lot of these. And we also use a lot of 50 milliliter centrifuge test tubes um, to grab samples out of the brink and also doing your yeast solutions and just doing pHs on our beer counting. We use, uh, we use this as well. So those are some small things that we uh, started out with in our lab. So a few bigger things now in the lab that we have. Um, over here we have four different scales. A little one for doing some grain. Uh, a bigger one for the yeast brink that you've seen in maybe some other videos. A smaller one for hops and hop poundage. Um, and then our awesome uh, Mettler Toledo balance here. Um, this balance is accurate enough to do our uh, dilutions of our yeast with this. So we do our yeast dilutions by weight and not volume using this accurate balance here. Uh, moving on down, we have what I think every brewery should have is a master gauge for your uh, pressure gauges. So you can turn this on and actually zero this out. It's accurate within a quarter of a PSI. So you can check your Zomnagel, check your pressure gauges. Really important because those things always move around. Um, so it's important to have a, a master gauge so you can check all your gauges. So this is a master pressure gauge that we have. Um, we have a refractometer here. So you can use this to check gravity if you want. We also use it to uh, check our our glycol uh, dilution in your chiller. Your glycol has to be a certain ratio to the water, and you use a refractometer to, to check that out. Here's our uh, SS60 Zomnagel. It's how you test carbonation. I've done a video on it if you want to check that out. Moving on down, we have a, a, a simple water test kit. So you can keep an eye on uh, your water testing and make sure nothing changes from our city. We have a simple water test kit here. Um, these two boxes are chemical test kits. So you can uh, test uh, the, the concentrations of your chemicals that you're putting in for your uh, loops. So chemi chemical test kits. We have a, a hot plate here, a hot plate with a magnetic stir bar. We use this with our Two liter flask and put some dry malt extract in makes make our yeast yeast starter there's a one inch flea in there that's the magnetic stir bar that spins around and mixes it up so a hot plate really nice to have moving on down sorry um, this is our ultrasonic sonic cleaner so cleaning carb stones and really small parts is pretty tough in a brewery and I'd recommend getting a small ultrasonic cleaner to clean those carbonation oxygen stones. It's a way to get in those pores with actually like sound wave, sound wave bursts um, to clean those things without having to scrub any of that stuff. So really important way, and you should get this if you plan on using carbonation stones to clean those carbonation stones. After the ultrasonic cleaner, we got our little AM scope here. So this is our microscope. It's not an expensive one, probably two, three hundred bucks. I think it's the AM scope B120 uh, B maybe. Uh, it's kind of nice that throughout this last decade, optics have been getting a lot cheaper and a lot better, whether that's microscope, uh, magnifying glasses, uh, gun scopes, all those, uh, all those optics have got really great now that computers are great and you can get a good microscope for pretty cheap these days. So this is the one I'm using. And then really our last thing over here is our uh, Mettler Toledo 7GO SG98. So this is our pH meter and our dissolved oxygen meter. You can plug both of them into the top here and read it. Um, super nice to have an accurate pH meter in a brewery so you can make small adjustments and have confidence that you're reading the right pH. Um, it's tough when you spend, spend less than $500 on a pH meter. It makes it a lot tougher in a brewery. Um, so if you wanted to get into the packaging, if you're a bigger packaging brewer, this dissolved oxygen meter isn't nice enough. Um, you'd also have to get a can piercer. So it's a way to punch a packaged can, kind of pull out a, pull out a sample 
and run it through a dissolved oxygen meter. Um, so a nicer, so a can piercer and a nicer dissolved oxygen meter if you plan on packaging a lot and sending your beer um, all over the place. So those are just a few uh, few items in our small lab that have got us got us going this far. Cheers. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video on the small lab setup. If you did, comment, share, smash that like button. Till next time, keep drinking.